Um, first up is a, a, a update on the SCR 201 task force. Um, I gave a pretty long summary last week that or last month that brought everybody uh, historically up to date. Uh, within the past month, uh, we are continuing the consultation process actively with faculty. Among the meetings, we're with the West Oahu faculty senators uh, to discuss the policy changes. Uh, as proposed, the meeting with the ACCFSC, the All-Campus Council of Faculty Senate Chairs, uh, last week, a meeting with the specialist or S faculty in the College of Education at UH Manoa. Uh, that's one of the units that has the highest, uh, a very high uh, number of specialists that they've uh, used that position classification in, a, in some unique ways. Uh, in collaboration with UPA, uh, uh, Vice President Halbert uh, has done the work with team to develop a white paper to share with faculty members. And we can send that link to uh, Regents if you're interested, just to provide more background. And uh, we've received preliminary feedback from UH Hilo and others that will be used as part of the uh, work over the summer that I described previously to begin the, the revisions. And we are still planning to bring you uh, recommended changes by the end of the calendar year. Uh, Quick update on enrollment. It is now 95 days before the first day of instruction for fall. Um, just to give you a sense of where we are, it, that's about half of our expected students are registered, not quite. So it, this isn't a, anywhere near a final uh, report, but we try to keep track of how things are going. Our registered headcount for the system is up about 1%. All three universities have a, a increased headcount as of right now, along with Leeward, Windward, and our host today at Honolulu Community College, which is up a whopping 20.3% in headcount. Um, since Chair Moore points out often, and I often also say, headcount really isn't a great metric. Um, I, I am also want to share our total student semester hours. So a typical course is three credit hours. That's three student semester hours. That's a measure of how much we're actually teaching as opposed to how many bodies are in at least one classroom. And that number is also up. In fact, it's up right now 2.3%. It's higher than our headcount increase. So if you think about those two numbers, that means we're serving a higher number of students and they are taking slightly more classes. Uh, the exact same campuses that have increased headcount also have increased number of SSH. And Chancellor Lee is leading the way with a 22% increase in credit student semester hours uh, compared to last year. Um, extramural funding, um, as of this morning, we are at 443 million seven hundred and two thousand six hundred seventy-three dollars That's down about one point. 1%, uh, that is a smaller gap than I've reported the last few months. Uh, Vice President Sirmos reports that he has uh, in ORS. Uh, they have cleared out the backlog. We have a new director there. The position's been vacant for some time. Like everywhere, we still struggle to fill administrative positions. Um, we are hopeful that we will uh, be able to exceed last year's uh, record or at least exceed half a billion dollars once again. Um, of note, uh, this month I looked at the number of awards. So our award count is down about 17%. Um, what that also means though, is that our average awards are bigger. So if you think about 1,451 awards of about $305,000, that's what it takes to add up to that 443 million. Uh, last year, we had more awards, but they were on average smaller, 256000 rather than 305000 So um, we're hoping to exceed again, but we'll see how it goes. And you'll get a much more complete report from Vice President Sirmos at the uh, R&I committee meeting uh, next month, which is two weeks from today, I think. I just want to highlight one award um, that is not huge, 
but it's a really important and strategic one for, for us. And we did put out a press release on it. But we are in the very first group of National Science Foundation Awards for development of regional innovation engines. And this is a new program based in a new director at NSF that Congress established. Uh, Congress wanted to see NSF driving more in technology, innovation, and partnerships. Um, in other words, how does the research that they support get out and change communities? Um, so we have what is called a development award. Uh, it's a little over a million dollars, but if we get it right, this program expects to make awards of about $160 million that will be 10 year awards. So it's a big deal. Um, and our project is establishing a network to serve as a hub for the U Hawaii and the US affiliated Pacific Islands to develop collaborative food innovation solutions that address climate change impacts, all driven and informed by indigenous knowledge systems and modern technology interwoven together. So um, it's pretty exciting. Um, for me, it's a shining example of how we can work together to advance our new strategic plan as well. Um, it drives a number of our new imperatives, including our Kuleana to Hawaii, diversifying our economy through research and innovation, focusing on food and agriculture as a hub, engaging with our Pacific Ohana and developing workforce and jobs that make a difference in our community. So uh, we have high hopes to get this one right and really make an impact uh, here and in the Pacific. Uh, lastly, just a couple other uh, comments before we turn it over for the campus report. Um, this has been commencement season. Thank you to all the regents who were able to attend commencements. Um, I made it to three, and thanks to airline woes, missed the fourth one I was attending, uh, intending to attend. Um, but I think for all of the commencements, it, it just reminds all of us why we do the work that we do. And a highlight this year was certainly um, the award of the three honorary degrees that you approved last month, um, all of which were greatly appreciated. And you could see it in the eyes of the families and awardees and those who honored them. Um, the, the testimony that you got about um, the uh, situation with healthcare at uh, a high school commencement, I think is an indication of a new pressure being put on uh, UH Manoa, the Stan Sheriff Center of parking people um, as the um, Aloha Stadium uh, is, was closed by the state. Uh, Blaisdell is not really available. So we have a lot of people coming to us for events and we are not currently set up for the business of running events. But one of the commencements we held besides the, we have, a, I think seven or eight high schools, um, West Oahu did its commencement at the Stan Sheriff Center, which seems unintuitive. Um, but Chancellor Benham reported that they had, they filled it, which they did not realize until they moved to a much larger venue, how much suppressed demand there was for family members to share that joy. Because when they were holding it on the lawn, uh, they had such limited capacity in that space on campus. So. It's one of those things you don't notice. Um, I want to mention something. Um, I, I'm happy to be here. Um, and since it's not in the chancellor's slides, uh, one of the highlights of this time of year, I'll steal some thunder or add some praise, is that eight Farrington High School uh, seniors um, earned associate's degrees from Honolulu Community College. So that's their largest class. And again, you know, we don't set out in general to have every high school student earn an associate degree before they graduate from high school, but we take great pride in them when they do, and it really sets them on a pathway um, to be able to complete a college degree, a, another college degree if they so choose, much faster and less expensively. And um, we've only had these graduates, I think, for about five years now since we started having some associate uh, degrees awarded by the time of high school graduates. I think um, Waipahu High School and Leeward were the first, but um, this is a really good sized class to have eight students doing it. Um, we now have 50 public high schools across the state partnering with early college 
It's really a flagship program that we do very well in the state. Um, it really makes a difference for addressing uh, that college going rate and the college retention rate, particularly for the students we've identified as needing the most help. Um, lastly, I put out at your desks um, uh, little booklets on a health convening that uh, Provost Bruno put together. And I think I have a few extras that I can give away for others who may want them. Um, during the post-pandemic planning, uh, Manoa began to look at how to elevate our health science programming, uh, education research service. And there have now been a year of monthly meetings uh, involving not just the units at UH Manoa, medicine, nursing, cancer center, social work and public health, uh, but also CTAR, SOEST, pharmacy at UH Hilo participates, and our community partners, in particular, um, Hawaii Pacific Health Queens and the Department of Health. And this is one of the ways we're looking at um, um, understanding our stovepipes so we can break them down. Uh, so two weeks ago, the provost hosted a pretty significant convening involving all of those units and our community partners. So I, I won't say much about the program. You know, I think if you just flip through it, you'll get a sense of the work going on. Uh, I just want to highlight the number of inter-unit collaborations and partnerships uh, with the community and private sector partners. Uh, and they are really key to doing this. And I'll, I'll just say having those private sector partners uh, and their CEOs, um, both Jill uh, Hogarth-Green and Ray Vara participated, gave remarks. They get how important we are to their success as well. And we appreciate their support and their um, capacity in helping us think about what we have to do better to serve the community in partnership with them.